India's way to freedom. Let's take a look. On July the 26th, 1876, Surendranath Banerjee, along with Anand Mohan Bose, founded the Indian National Association in Calcutta. The Indian Association was the most prominent of the pre-Congress organizations. Social and economic changes started occurring in the 19th century that also led to an increase in the political consciousness leading to the birth of political associations and national movements for independence. In 1875, Sasir Kumar Ghosh and Shambhu Charan Mukherjee founded the India League to represent the middle class and work towards a sense of nationalism among the people. However, the League was dismembered and afterwards, Surendranath Banerjee founded the Indian Association along with his friend Ananda Mohan Bose on the 26th of July, 1876. It wanted to bring about the unity of the Indian races and peoples on the basis of common political interests and aspirations. It objected to the decrease in the age limit for candidates for the Indian Civil Service Examination in 1877. The association advocated for simultaneous civil service examinations in England and India, as well as the Indianization of higher administrative positions. The Indian Association also spearheaded a campaign to repeal the Repressive Arms Act and the Vernacular Press Act. The Indian Association established branches in other towns and cities throughout Bengal as well as outside of Bengal. The membership fee was kept low in order to attract members from the poorer sections of society. The association sponsored the first All India Conference which was held in Calcutta from December the 28th to 30th, 1883. More than a hundred delegates from across the country attended. The Indian Association later merged with the Indian National Congress in 1886. We remember Malti Devi Chaudhary, who was an Indian civil rights and freedom activist born on the 26th of July, 1904. She was deeply influenced by both Gurudev, Rabindranath Tagore and Mahatma Gandhi. While studying at Shanti Niketan, she met her future husband and they both relocated to present-day Odisha. The Salt Satyagraha started soon after and Malti Devi Chaudhary threw herself into the movement. She had organized the Krushika Andolana, that is the farmers' movement, as part of the freedom struggle against the zamindars and moneylenders who exploited the poor. After independence, Malti Chaudhary, as a member of the Constituent Assembly of India and as the president of the Utkal Pradesh Congress Committee, tried her best to emphasize the role of education, especially adult education, in rural reconstruction. She also joined the Bhudan movement of Archaj Vinoba Bahave. The noble soul breathed her last on the 15th of March, 1998. We also remember Ismail Khan, who was an inhabitant of the Bombay Presidency. He took part in the struggle for freedom from the foreign rule in 1857 and also led his neighbours in attacking the British establishments and trying to overthrow the company Raj. Ismail was caught by the company troops in the course of an engagement and charged with plundering the government properties and rebellion against the British. He was sentenced to imprisonment for life and was transported to the Andaman Islands on 7th of March 1859 where he died on the 26th of July 1859. We salute the brave martyr Ismail Khan.